Substances are constantly moving in and out of cells. Useful substances move in and waste products move out. Today, we're learning about one method of moving substances, it's diffusion. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditichi.com for your free copy. Let's start with a definition. Diffusion is the spreading out of particles of any substance in solution, i.e. a liquid or a gas, resulting in a net movement, which just means overall movement, from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Let's look at an example of diffusion. So here we've got a beaker of water. Water is a liquid, so its particles can move freely around. Now let's imagine that you drop some food colouring into it, like this. The food colouring is really concentrated in one place initially, so this area is a higher concentration. Everywhere else in the beaker is a lower concentration, since there's no food colouring there yet. So we can label it like this. Because it is in solution, the food colouring particles can also move around. The movement of these particles is random, and they spread out from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. This can also be described as down a concentration gradient, as they're moving from high to low. So we can show it like this. Eventually, all of the food colouring has completely diffused throughout the beaker, so that the concentration is equal everywhere. If you were looking at this, it would look like a pale purple colour. The particles will still continue to move around randomly. It's worth noting that diffusion is called a passive process, and this is because no additional energy is needed to move the particles down a concentration gradient. There are three factors that can affect the rate of diffusion. The first is temperature. Higher temperatures cause particles to move more quickly, so diffusion will happen faster as they spread out much more quickly. Using a Bunsen burner here would make the food colouring diffuse much more quickly. Similarly, if there were a cold temperature, this would slow down the rate of diffusion. The second factor affecting the rate of diffusion is the concentration gradient. This is the difference in concentration. The greater the difference in concentration, the faster diffusion will occur. Look at these two boxes. In which one will diffusion of the orange gas happen the fastest? Box A or box B? Pause and see if you can work it out. Ready? Well, we can see in both boxes that the high concentration is up here in the top left corner. So we can label it as such. And then we'll need to compare the rest of the area of gases. So here we have got a lower concentration than the top left corner. But in B, it is even lower as there are no orange gas molecules. And therefore, it's a steeper concentration gradient, so diffusion will be much, much faster. It will still happen in box A, but the diffusion will be a lot slower. Okay, finally, our third factor affecting the rate of diffusion is surface area. Having a larger surface area provides a bigger area for diffusion to take place across and therefore speeds it up. Let's take a look at both of these diagrams. In these diagrams, food molecules are being absorbed into the bloodstream. In which one do you think this will happen fastest? Well, if we take a look at the one at the top, we can see it's got a very flat membrane surface and therefore this is a lower surface area than the diagram below where the membranes are highly folded. So we can call this a higher surface area. Now let's look at the impact that this has. In the top diagram, the molecules will only be absorbed when they're right next to the membrane. In the bottom one, many, many more of the food molecules are in proximity and therefore a much higher rate of diffusion will happen. The bottom one is actually a diagram of your small intestines and they're shaped like this to maximize the food absorption in your body. Okay, now it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video and give them a go, and then press play when you're ready to go over the answers. So, number one, define diffusion. 
Well, this is the spreading out of particles in a solution or gas, resulting in a net movement from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Or you can say down a concentration gradient. Just make sure you actually write that word concentration out in full. I've just abbreviated it here. Two, name this cell and describe how it is adapted for rapid diffusion. Well, this is a root hair cell and it is adapted for rapid diffusion by having a shape that increases its surface area, i.e. it's got this little sticky out bit here. Three, CO2 diffuses out of muscle cells and into the blood to be taken to the lungs. In which muscle cell will diffusion occur the fastest and why? Okay, so we need to start by looking at the question really closely to make sure we understand where diffusion is occurring. So it's going out of the muscle cells and into the blood. So we need to compare the muscle cells each to the blood cell concentration. And if we're looking for diffusion that occurs the fastest, we need to look for the steepest concentration gradient, i.e. the one with the biggest difference, because that will make diffusion happen faster. So blood cell A compared to the blood has a difference of 0.5 arbitrary units, whereas blood cell B only has a difference of 0.1. 0.5 is obviously bigger. So diffusion will occur fastest in muscle cell A because it has a steeper concentration gradient with a difference of 0.5 arbitrary units to the blood. Whereas muscle cell B only has a difference of 0.1 arbitrary units, a much lower concentration gradient. How did you do? In the next video, we're learning about how water moves in and out of cells. You can click here to watch it. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting that red button below. Thanks and bye.